my tips. Hello and welcome to another Tech by Tips video. In today's video, we're going to be addressing a video request that I've received, and that comes from Richard76773 that is basically requesting a video on Snipe IT. So we're going to be covering this. So let's go first into the GitHub page for Snipe IT that can be found at github.com slash snipe slash snipe dash IT. And if we go here, we see that this is uh, being released a lot of times. It's currently version 7013 and it has 268 contributors. So that's really good. It's an application that is mainly written on PHP and JavaScript. So that's great. And uh, what about this application? All right, it says it's an open source asset management. So it's basically um, an asset management tool. This is what usually companies will use to track all the assets that they have, you know, computers, laptops, cell phones, uh, router switches, servers, anything like that. So it's basically like that, anything IT so that you can track your assets. And it says it's an uh, open source project for asset management. It allows you to track a device, when it was purchased, how to depreciate it and all of that, licenses and all of that. So it's really nice. It's written in the Laravel uh, framework and uh, it's released quite frequently. It says that there's a manual here on how to install it. And here's a user manual also for the application. Here's how you can submit uh, bug reports and feature requests and all of that. So the GitHub repository is pretty complete, has a lot of information. And if you click on the information on the how to install it and stuff, then you can find a link to their example Docker Compose file. And also you need to have an environments file that is referenced by the Docker Compose file. And that's also something that you can get from the repository. So that's really good. We have all that we need in there. I want to make a pause. I apologize for the sound of my voice. I'm feeling a little sick this week. Hopefully it'll pass soon. But yeah, let's continue with this. So for this application, I have already set a lot of stuff up. But one thing that I found out while getting this application working is that it takes a long time to set itself up. As you can see, I'm up for two hours and it just basically finished running the database uh, creation. So you need to be very patient with the setup of this. So what did I do? All right, let's go quickly here into our file station and in file station what I did is the usual I created a project folder for snipe IT and in there is where I'm gonna put the environment file and the docker compose file that we create and I also went into the configurations folder and I created a folder for Sna uh, snipe IT and in there is where a snipe IT is gonna store all of its information so it creates three folders there that's data dumps and keys but what you need is the core folder up here which is the root of that and then we go into the projects here in container manager and we create a project for snipe IT and then we create a YAML configuration file and in my case this is pretty straightforward it doesn't have a lot of uh, details so basically it just has the image that it's gonna use but then it's referencing a variable in the environment file that is going to specify the version that we want to run and then you know we specify that we want the container to restart unless we stop it ourselves and then i mounted the folder for snipe it that i mentioned that i created in the configs folder and that goes into the var lib snipe it inside the container and then again for the ports we specified that we're going to use the port that is defined in the environment variable file to expose it in the nas and then the containers listening port 80. And then I just said, use the environment file here for all the rest of the environments that you need. If you notice, I didn't specify a user ID or group ID here. It is not really doing much with folders and stuff. So that was not specified in here. So now this is important. We have an environment file. We need to put that somewhere. So what I did is I went into the NAS and I created that environments file. And that file is located in the same folder that I specified for the project. So right next to the Docker Compose file. And when you open that environment file, you get this. This is basically the file that was in the GitHub repository, but with changes that I implemented to it. 
So here I'm specifying that the app version that is going to be running is 641 and I said that I want my container to be exposed on the Synology NAS on port 8068 because I've already used all the ports that are on top of that. So that's good for me. You can put any port that you want in here. Then the environment I said is production and the debug is disabled right now. And it says that you can generate your own app key by running this command. I honestly didn't do that. I just ran it with the base app key that was provided in the repository, but you should do that if you're gonna actually be using this. So that way you make sure you have a unique app key for that. And then in here, I just changed the localhost because it said localhost here. So I specified the IP of the NAS and then the port that we're saying that we wanna use here. So that's the app URL. And then I changed the app time zone to Eastern time. So that's in my case, America, New York. Here's the URL that tells you all the lists so you can find the right one for you. And then what's the other thing that I changed? Well, I went here into the database settings and remember that I created a MariaDB instance in the Synology NAS running through Package Manager. So I put the IP of the NAS as the host for that. It's a MySQL database and using the normal MySQL port. And then it says that it's gonna connect to this uh, Snipe IT database and it's not using the Snipe IT user. And I specify here a password for that. So again, you need to put uh, kind of a big password here that has a combination of upper, lower, number, and character. So that's what I used there. And I did not change the root password because I would not be using the root user for this. And that was all the changes that I needed here on the database settings. There are other things that you can change here. For example, to send email notifications, you would have to put proper values in here. For example, let's say you use a Gmail account, right? So then you would put all the information for Google here with your username and password for your account and stuff like that. And here you also have other options, but I honestly didn't touch any of that. I just left it as it is. You can look at this later if you want, see what they do, but I honestly didn't want to change anything else. I just left everything as it was. So once we have that environment file right next to our Docker Compose file, then when we build this application, then it's going to reference that environment file there. Notice that the file's name is .env. It doesn't have anything else. It's .env. So that's the name of the environment file. And then you can just build it. And then once you build it, it's going to create a container. And that's the container that you were seeing when I started in here in the NAS. And that container basically connects to the database. But again, I have not covered the database part yet. So let me go back into my MySQL workbench for a second. So remember in a previous video, I created a database for ROMM. We had this system database, but we didn't have anything else. So I created this Snipe IT database by running the commands that you see over here. So create database Snipe IT, and I ran that. It created the database, and then I created a user to be an administrator of that database. So Snipe IT from anywhere, and then I put the password. And then I said, grant all the privileges on that specific database to that user. And then I flush the privileges for the permissions to get applied and everything to be worked. So then when you go into server users, then you'll see Snipe IT. And if you go into schema privileges, you see on the database Snipe IT, it has all the permissions. So that's what we want. So that's how you set up the database for Snipe IT. But when you set it up, it doesn't have anything. So all of these tables is what I was saying that takes a long time to create. In my case, it took almost two hours. So if we go back into the NAS and we see the logs, you know, it says that I finished basically like at eight o'clock at night, but it started way before, like at six something. If you see all it's doing is working on the database, working on the database, making changes to the tables in the database. So you have to be very patient. Once you have this running, let it do its thing. Forget about it, honestly, until you get to a point where it says, that the application is running, it started, and the no schedule commands are ready to run. Once you do that, then you can go to that port that we specified in my case here, I said 8068. So on the IP of the NAS, you click on, uh, you go to the browser, you put the IP of the NAS, call on 8068 in my case, and then you see this, which is the pre-flight setup configuration. So it tells me that it did some checks it checks the PHP version is proper, 
the URL is working, the database is set up, the config file was created, and the app is set to production, and the user uh, is able to write files, and uh, the permissions look right for the uh, directories and all that. In this case, you can test your emails, but in my case, I did not specify the email settings, so that's basically optional. In my case, I'm not going to test that, but if you have configured that, you can click here. It will send a test email to check that you can connect to your email provider. And then you click on where it says create database tables, and then it should do all that it needs on the databases. So now on the database, it makes sure that everything was installed and everything the tables are ready so we're good here now we can create our admin user basically it's the the god account here so need you need to set uh some information up in here for example your site name it could be like your company name right so in my case let's say i'm gonna say tech by tips so that's my my site my company and then what language i want to use what kind of currency i want to use and then we can see what else we want to do here email domain this is to generate email addresses when importing i think all those oranges mean that it is required so let's make sure that we fill all of that and uh, let's say techbytetips.com and then how do we want the email format just going to keep that base one and then the username is going to be that the last name is going to be that and then but then for the username we do need to put something here so i'm going to put like that and some kind of password so let's use snipe it snipe it and then we should be able to save that user and it's telling me that the password must be at least eight characters so let's say snipe it one two three snipe it one two three all right and it logs us into the application here so now we basically have our Snipe IT interface here, where we can see the dashboard that tells us how many people are using this, how many components we have, how many consumables, how many accessories, how many licenses, and assets. As it is right now, I don't have anything, just my account. And here we have the option to create things. So this is important uh, because we have several things that we can monitor and track here. For example, licenses, that means software. So if you buy, let's say, licenses for Microsoft Office or something like that. You can store that here and track those licenses. Accessories, let's say for example, your company needs uh, you know, keyboards, mouse, headsets, stuff like that. You can put all that in here. Consumables would be things that you use and they go away like uh, printer paper or toner or ink, things along those lines. And then components also you can get. So. And then here's like assets per se, like computers and servers and stuff like that. So you can add all of those things and then manage them in here. If we go into the left side here, we can expand by clicking here. And then we have here the list of all the assets that you can filter based on certain conditions. You can do a, a scan, you can check out, you can see what's requested, delete it, etc. There's a bunch of stuff so you can filter out the contents of your assets. And here we can see the licenses. If you were to have a license here, then you will see it. And then here you're gonna create them and add them here too. So that's where you manage your licenses. For accessories, basically the same. So you click here and then you have the way to see them here and create new ones. Consumables, works the same way, components. So for each different type of thing that you can track here, you have an option here and then you can manage it here. And here we have an option that says predefined kits. That's pretty interesting here. So that lets you quickly check out a collection of items. So if you need to group together sets of items, you can do that here. You can create a predefined kit and then you can track those like that. In here you manage your users. So you go into people, you'll see the accounts. You can create a new account, delete an account, edit, do all those things here. If you have data in a CSV file from maybe a previous instance, of the application or something let's say you backed up and you upgraded and then you need to bring all that data in you can do that here you can import that csv file and then it'll import it and here's how you get to the settings you click here and then you have all the options that you have here for the settings i'm not really gonna cover all of this because 
that's out of the scope of the video if you want to go over that i recommend you go to their github repository look at their documentation which is pretty extensive and then you can figure all of this out and then you can also generate reports based on the data that you have on your instance for example you can see activity reports you have the audit log that keeps track of all the things that happen with each asset so like i said you can track the IT department got this new computer. They set it up. They gave it to this user. Uh, the user had a problem, returned it back to the IT department so that they could fix it. And all of that is that chain of custody is tracked here in the audit log. You have the depreciation report. In here, I don't have any information, but you know, if you're a business, you buy an asset, it costs you a certain amount of money, and then you can depreciate that from your taxes on uh, time. It could be a year, it could be several years. And this helps you to create a report on how much your assets have depreciated. So how much you can take away from your taxes. You have the license report here that will give you a list of uh, if the licenses that we have, how many we have, how many we have used, when they're supposed to expire, when did we purchase them and stuff like that. So this is really good if you're working with digital assets like that. And um, the asset management report is another option that you have here. So as you can see, there's a lot of nice reports and tools that you can get from your data that you're storing here. It's, I'm not going to cover that. Again, go to the documentation if you want to see that. And there's also an option here that says requestable assets. And if you want to know what that is, go to the documentation. The, main, the important thing about this video was to show you how you set it up. So we have already set it up. Now you have a basic idea of how the application looks like and uh, how do you get to the different sections of it. When it comes to the use, please refer to the documentation because this is a lot that could be covered here and I honestly don't even have examples of stuff that I could put in here. But yes, it, it looks like a very simple but yet very useful application, especially for small businesses. I think they would definitely benefit from having this type of application because you know you don't have to pay for it it's open source you host it yourself but it gives you a lot of usability and insight as to your assets and their depreciation and all of that so i highly recommend it it looks like a nice application that's gonna be it for this video so if you like it hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you have not done so remember i always start to make videos on your requests and things that i think you can find useful so feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below that is going to help me to identify more things that I can do for you. And uh, also, I'm not monetizing the channel. So you should not be seeing any ads from YouTube on my videos. And that also means that I'm not making money from this. So I highly recommend that if you like the content and you want to support me, you go to the link in the description below and do a PayPal donation because that will certainly allow me to focus more on the channel give you good quality content, answer your questions, and, you know, invest time in helping you out. So that's going to be it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.